Let's get back to basics and find out what is the fundamental person. Hello everyone and welcome to the platform. How are you doing? I hope you're doing good now. Um, a lot has been going on about the story of Osinachi Nwachiku. So I have an update today on my analysis or would I say a couple of things I got to look at when I was still looking at the developing stories about Osinachi's death. Now, just to give you an update, as at the moment of me making this video over the weekend, 16th of April, um, an autopsy has not been done on her to really ascertain the cause of her death even though there are rumors out there because on the Vanguard right now, April 15th, the, it is said that an autopsy is yet to be done because of the family members are not around at the moment and you know the cause of death as narrated by the husband said to be because of sickness um, has to be reconciled or what I say really investigated as to the cause of that as you know is being publicized to be as to or due to domestic violence okay so we have to wait for us to reach to a logical conclusion of this particular trend we have to um, get the autopsy report on that except you know if there is any you can actually tell me in the comments and I have to look at it and then see what I have to say about it but in case you are meeting me for the first time my name is George I make commentaries about trends and um that just said, all right. So thank you and welcome to the channel. So today we are looking at a couple of things that I got to observe after the last video I made regarding um, what um, the apex of the ministry himself, Dr. Paul Eneshe, had to say about what he knows with regards to the death of Osinachi Mwachuka. I made a couple of videos here and there, so you might, you might want to check them out to know what my thoughts were on that. And at best, what we can do right here as outsiders to her family or maybe to the ministry, even if you are an insider in the ministry, is make assumptions or is ask questions or would I say just, you know, give our opinions as to what is happening, okay? But one thing I like about this particular incident, not as if I'm like, I like I'm not saying I like the death, is how the attention that has been raised around the death of Osinachi Wachuku has even gotten to the point of reaching the Senate. So I, I might get to look at um, a couple of other things, maybe in my next video, as to how Nigerians, or would I say, really prominent figures in Nigeria has reacted to the situation. So we can actually get to learn from this because my essence of making videos about trend is not just talking about them, okay, is to analyze them and then maybe one way or the other we can learn one or two things from what it is that is trending out there, okay. Now, I, I took my time after making my last video, which I just played to you what um, Dr. Paul Eneche and the wife had to say with regards to the situation, and then I, make, I made a couple of comments from there, and I read most of your comments. You people are just so wonderful. I think I should give the audience a round of applause. Many of you doing interesting, would I say, well, objective opinions, even though some people came and were, you know, insulting here and there and some were actually being to the extreme of saying that okay maybe she was i don't want to make some comments or would i say add volume to some things that are really really out of the box but the idea is that when we talk about these things or maybe start having conversations like this i think it opens up our mind more to see this as something we can talk about because in some churches some things are like taboo to talk about them let's say that like the subject of let's say someone dies in a church and maybe many pentecostal churches as i got to understand don't announce it because they don't want to talk about you know death or make it look like people die in their church or something okay so maybe right now maybe because of Osinachi's case you might look at situations whereby maybe someone passes on in a church. Come on, the Bible itself talks about mourn with those who mourn, rejoice with those who rejoice. So some people were telling me in the comments the reason why at first the apex didn't react to it was because, you know, let the dead, let the dead bury the dead kind of analogy and all that. So I was like, no, I think it wasn't sensitive at that point because he knew before he even got to the country and then he never mentioned it in the first, in the first Sunday um, he had service in his church, okay? No, so now let's look at a couple of things. Now, based on this video right now, um, I had to think over it over the weekend and then just to, you know, just add um, a couple of pointers I got to observe in that video. Now, this is not a defense for Dr. Paul Eneche, but it's just an objective analysis. So please take your time to listen to the things I have to say. So he started by saying that this was a sober reflection, okay, when he was talking about the death of Osinachi. And the first thing that came to my mind was that, okay, the first... Of course, this, the first video I made about this whole thing, when he came back to Nigeria, I didn't see any form of quote-unquote sober reflection or maybe a moment of silence or something like that happened 
that first Sunday. And people told me in the comments that, okay, normally for every Sunday, he prepares his, the, the, the messages. The Dunamites were telling me in the comments that messages are prepared ahead of time so he cannot change his message because that is already predefined you understand so he cannot just come and change the mood of a sunday so the sunday has to be joyful happy and all that so i was like is that a good reason for such not to even be announced or said or is it because of the social media attention and the outcry that was everywhere and the whole buzz from all blogs and all that that made him to come out and make this statement because Many people said in my comment section that this was a form of damage control. Could it be a damage control or just him being plainly plain about the situation? I don't know, but damage control comments were more than comments that were, you know, coming from the dynamites, coming to defend their papa and say that because when he said this, my, my, my inbox was just full with lots of links here and there even if i make a video different from this because on facebook i posted a video not about even this and i did not even post this particular story on my facebook page and people were commenting and tagging me to what he had said okay now looking at it again i was just wondering to myself he said that leto shinachi if you listen to him correctly he said that she came with the husband and then complained to him about the particular chest pain and then the situation she was having with um respiration and all that now just paint this scenario my dear wonderful viewers don't try to be sentimental here at least please if you're watching me turn on your logical brain because most times i follow logic okay you are a pastor a lead pastor the geo and two couples walk in or a couple walk into your office and then the couple tells you or maybe she tells you that she's having a problem with her chest or something of course being there with the husband maybe she would not want to mention to you that he's been beating her up or that's been going they have been having issues in their marriage or something so they came there to you to tell you or she told you at that point that she was having a problem on her chest or something and then you just said okay wow you have a problem with your chest i so stand up let's pray being someone that you have dr or doctor attached to your name now i don't know if it is a medical doctor or academic doctor but if i'm taking it to be that you because it is said according to your biography that you are a medical doctor or you're in the medical field you being coming from the background of being a doctor if you are telling if someone is talking to me in my capacity as a doctor because at this point right now he's not like a doctor but he's maybe doctor for Jesus, or would I say more of like a pastor. So she was talking to you in the capacity of a pastor. So in your the first call of action that came to you was to pray for her. But if you were to be yourself by default settings, or maybe what you were before you became a pastor or whatever, you know how doctors behave. You are talking to the person about something medical. The person will now start doing some, what I say, diagnosis, building some hypothesis, asking you questions as to, to understand what might be the cause of this or something. So you didn't go to the causal and the effect factor. You just went on to pray for her, which, in my opinion, doesn't really make a logical sense to me because you just come in and then just tell me you have a chest thing. Maybe they had some other discussions aside that and then you decided that the best, the first option was to pray for her. And then you talked about that you prayed and prayed and prayed. So I was just asking myself a question. Why would you have doctor attached to your name? I'm just asking a question. Why would you have doctor attached to your name when by default, you don't maybe to some extent act in that capacity because sometimes okay i'm not saying that he should drop his ministry and go and start being a doctor there's a reason maybe why he dropped preaching and then went into you know dropped doctoring or would i say being a doctor medically and went into preaching but just look at this this way when they do their healing thing they do in their church because because of this particular i've some of you that have been following me for over the years, I've never talked about him or something. I started watching most of their content and would I say most of the things that happen in their church. When someone is coming for maybe some kind of healing or miracles or something, there's, there's someone called an announcer, in my opinion, that says, oh, this person has been sick for this and this. This person has not been working. This person has this condition. And then you are able to hear this person's condition and what this person is going through before you go lay hands on them. You understand so at that point of this woman coming to you and telling you that she has chest you know issue or something 
you didn't at that point think of okay maybe go know what is go your problem and um, what is really going on before you come the first thing that just came to mind was you praying for her that means maybe you had an understanding or maybe defined to yourself what you think might have been her problem when she came in your capacity as a doctor or maybe someone that understands the medical complications but i think when it comes to this normally the doctors himself would ask you questions to know what might have caused this and maybe how to stop it so let's assume in my defense for him if i'm defending him that he was not talking to her at that time when she came with the husband in her cap in his capacity as someone that quote and unquote used to be a medical doctor because if he's still a doctor adding doctor to his name or something then maybe I think the doctor should be left aside and then just call you for the next year. Except like we see most times, I see many, you know, because for you to, you know, have a profile when it comes to you being a minister, sometimes they have to add a doctor, the professor, the this and that, which also increases your level of, would I say, relevance or respect or whatever. So that aside, okay, so maybe he was not there in his capacity as quote and unquote a doctor. <laughs> Now, a lot of people have said in the comments, which I read most of your comments, that why didn't, wasn't he sensitive at that time to the situation? According to what he said, he's saying, this is what I know about Osinachi and her death. So I was just wondering, because I, when I now started watching him talk about the whole grammar, even CTR, he had to explain what CTR is in, you know, nitty gritties and all that, and mention hospitals here, and that was like, this medical jargons is not really what we need right now, okay? Because I think he's just, he was just showing his medical prowess, or what I say, his understanding of the medical thing, which not everybody would understand. And maybe it looks prolonged to the particular conversation or talking about the situation. But I also got to note a couple of things. So the part where he said that it got to a point that she was fine and there was a lot of improvement and she was really even out of the oxygen and all that tallied with what the mom said in her interview. I think I made a video translating everything the mom said. If you have not watched it, I think I'll put it in the pin comment. Um, the mom said that it got to a point that she was fine and she was even telling her daughter that, you know, they have to do a Thanksgiving kind of thing because right now she's feeling very much okay. So it tallied with what the mom said that, at, at some point she got better and everything was okay she could still breathe normally and fine and you know all of that kind of thing so we can't say if the reason why she was having chest complications was because she herself was under abuse or maybe beaten to that point she was having that because i think if it was more of like true beating she was having that medical complications this is what i'm thinking when they walked into that office where he was he could see visibly that this woman has been through some kind of abuse except he's totally blind and non sensitive to you know situations like this and i would say that his level of insensitivity is all the way up already i talked about the fact that the first sunday was a flop okay so them coming in at that time together if he couldn't notice anything with among them then that would make a lot of sense that maybe it was not beating that led to her herself having the complication she was having on her chest before she came to him at that time but we know that according to news what happened that took her to the hospital was as a result of beating even upon the fact that maybe she just recovered from her chest situation and she was kicked on the chest according to the story but till the autopsy is out we cannot vehemently you know add volume to that like you know already i add volume to things right here on the platform in case you are new to my person but let's continue with something else now according to him what he said osinachi died on friday night so that particular friday night into saturday he was in cameroon between 7 and 8 thursday and friday which got into saturday all right so he knew before he got into nigeria okay so the whole fallacy about that situation that he didn't know and all that i think that's a knockoff because he knew even before sunday service so where i got frustrated a little bit because if I am concerned about it, people were saying it's not my business, it's not your church. I was like, are you people? He said, are you normal? For the presidency to be concerned about this, is it their church or whatever? But let's just leave that aside, okay? So it not even being announced in church or something just to shows me as an outsider the degree of 
how if this was a normal person not being Osinachi that people know and has attention to herself or something, that kind of thing. Maybe many people themselves, you know, pass on in the church and they never talk about it. It becomes a, you know, something we don't discuss or whatever and then it moves on. Because I know for a fact that many Pentecostal churches or many churches, let me not just say Pentecostal churches, don't talk about that or make announcement of such in their churches. If I beg, I... I, I <laughs> I stand to be corrected on this particular point. Now, talking about Dr. Um, Becky Eneche, because I don't know if you guys watched my the, the translation I did about her interview, um, BBC Ibo's interview with the mother of Osinachi. The mother actually made emphatically clear that Becky Eneche herself was instrumental to helping her move from where she was when she was feeling ill, the mother, to Abuja to stay with them because Peter Nwachiku refused her from to come there. So um, Osinachi had to call Becky herself, the, doc, the, the wife of Dr. Paul Eneche, to help beg her husband to allow the mom come to Abuja. Of which he agreed so it's more of like speaking to a higher person that could have the attention of that the husband could pay attention to to help her so i was just asking myself a question still talking about the level of sensitivity just imagine you are an outsider to my relationship and i call you and i just tell you please can you beg my husband that he should allow my mom to come to abuja she's not feeling fine she's the only mother i have that kind of situation if the family are saying that Okay, Dr. Paul Anetje was saying what I know. Now, there is no categorical open statement by Dr. Becky Anetje that she didn't know about the situation because at this point, sensitivity will make you know that this marriage is going through problems. And how I understand women, I'm telling you, women and ladies, they share a lot of secrets among themselves that even sometimes men could be like this tight between themselves, but women, they talk... It, you get what I'm saying? So at that point, I was just wondering to myself... If she could be this instrumental in bringing the mother from where she was to Abuja, what if she knew something? It's just a question. Because I was now trying to really understand the mindset that she has and the mindset of the members of the church as to what they have with regards to marriage. So that this now led me to now start digging into what they have been taught. Because they made reference to the fact that in their ministry, they have been teaching their people with regards to how they are supposed to, you know, live with family and family life and all that. And when it comes to the context of abuse, it's better for you to be alive than for you to die in, you know, such a situation. So I found this video as to what she preached recently. Now, I went as far back as seven years ago, eight years ago. I have all the videos here on my account, but I wouldn't want to play them all because that would be me just maybe thinking too fast. Some people would be like, this guy, are you a nerd or something? But this is a recent video she made on her platform so let me tell you she has her platform on youtube the husband has her his and then they have the church's own i know the media team might decide to attack this video because i'm playing her video but i'm i want to take the risk because i've seen such, such things happen on the platform before so listen to what she had to say when she was talking to women and note some silly end point i'm going to play it in full so you get to understand some mindset i think that maybe the women themselves are having the bible says for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Ephesians 5.23 Thought for the day, a glorious home is foundation for a glorious destiny. It has been confirmed that God wants us to experience not just his power, but his glory in all areas of our lives. And one area God wants us to experience his glory is in the home. Every successful ministry is a product of a successful home. When a person fails in ministry, in career or in business, one area to look at is the home. In our study today, we shall examine some facts about a glorious home. The first is that a glorious home is God's vision for every marriage or home. God likens the glorious church to the relationship between a man and his wife. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 27. A glorious home is central to God's agenda for man. Number two, a glorious home has a foundation for a glorious destiny. 
a man or a woman that must have a glorious destiny must first attain a glorious home. If a destiny would be glorious, the home must be glorious. For instance, if you look at the glorious destiny and impact of Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and see the impact they are making today, it's connected to the solidity of their glorious home. The home front is in order. In scriptures, Aquila and Priscilla, who were almost inseparable, had a powerful destiny. Why? Because of a glorious home. Acts 18, 1 to 28 and Romans 16, 3 to 4. So beloved, a glorious home is foundation for a glorious destiny. To be playing with your marital destiny is to be playing with your life and your destiny as a whole. So remember this, that a glorious home is foundation for a glorious destiny. I believe that the Lord shall help you in the name of Jesus. Now that's just a couple of clips I saw when she talks about him and even the one she was talking about how she gets to treat her husband. So I would think in my opinion that maybe to an extent Osinachi herself, if she is a keen follower of her, of course she would call her to help you know beg the husband we still have might have this idea that the success of her ministry or would i say the success of what she does for a living or her life is tied to the success of her home so you now begin to understand why she might be keeping quiet or not want to make this whole thing about her marriage overblown because if a marriage is not succeeding then it affects her ministry as a person. Not as if they're going to send her away or stop her from, from ministering because she's, she's from a dysfunctional family, her family is having issues. But thinking to herself and maybe hearing this over time or maybe being someone that she is following, Becky and Neche, it might make sense why she might just want to box things up and not speak about it. But I now ask myself a question. Dr. Paul and Neche talked about the fact that the choir knew, the producer knew, Come on, um, Frank Edwards knew, a lot of people on the outside knew, and these rumors don't get to you. Or maybe that level of sensitivity, like I read most of your comments, was not there for you to know that something is really going on. It now begins to make me feel like, okay, maybe she was known, or would I say the interest in her was maybe mainly for her talent and the gifts she, you know, of course, like he said, she, she is a kingdom asset that has been lost okay which i think is very much true with this okay but do they go beyond the fact that you have a talent we know you for this or would i say your administration to look into this supposed family how are they coping how are things going and all that okay because of course like you heard him say they speak they spoke at that time mostly on a daily so she on her own decided not to tell him about the situation if she did not tell him because I was not there in their conversations you were not there so let's not try to you know pull these strings too hard and be like okay we are blaming the church entirely because whether you like it or not like i said in my other video it's the tortoise himself that carries the burden on his back that decides to carry the burden wherever he's going and the tortoise understands very much well what she or he is going through i don't know if you're getting the point of what i'm trying to say at this point so i think to a great extent the mindset of snatchy herself had to a great extent also affected the situation because for a fact she loved her family she loved her kids she wanted to maintain everything and hoped she could keep everything under control and hopefully according to what the the family said that she was hoping that the husband would change over time and now news have come out that the husband's name is not even that in what we all are parading around that the family were saying that it had a different surname and another thing also again is the way they got married and i think i, I talked about this before if you watch my initial video, video when i started about this whole situation i said in Igbo tradition funny enough we are from the same local government i and Osinachi's husband not like from the same village so when it comes to the marital rights of the Igbo culture if you listen to what the mom said no sorry what the twin sister said as to how they got married and how he met her at the glorious um singers program program or something and how you know she said there was no form of courtship you know what courtship itself means okay so there was no time whereby okay they got to know each other and that kind of thing like too well and all that before they got married everything was more of like fast paced okay the next thing that paid the bride price the next thing they did the wedding the wedding was not even like that big even though i'm not saying you should go and do a big wedding i'm not even planning to do like a big bongos bogobo wedding in my in the future something small is okay but that point of knowing each other that courtship and all that might even make 
her really understand who this person is because what you experience in the relationship is what amplifies in the marriage so that's why they have spent which i think the couple themselves have spent time teaching their members as to when it comes to the boyfriend and girlfriend level the things they should how they should go through it and the things they should so i watched a, i watched their singles and married conferences they had or conventions or programs they had from way back to know that they have spent their time to teach their followers as to how it should be before marriage but these people didn't experience that together before they got married so maybe some people are like in this faith realm that okay you meet someone like how it was back in the day okay the, the parents come and speak to this one and the family speak together the next thing you are handed over so that point of experiencing each other maybe not like cohabiting but getting to know each other very well before deciding to say i do was not really there because the sister said so so everything was much fast paced and the next thing like the sister said it was all wickedness because you know he was trying to separate the twins together so i listened to the family's interviews and i got to really understand that indeed peter Mwachiku himself if i am permitted to say was really an epitome of very kind of like wicked if i'm to say that but um it depends on how you look at it because until the autopsy itself comes out we can't really say that much about the situation as to which what caused the death but what we can say for a fact is that she was going through abuse and torture and suffering in silence because she wanted to keep her own family but now this has raised a, a, a series of conversation about the whole concept of divorce and i'm seeing this to be more of like you know there is a hand also involved some people will say devilish but i don't like if you have been watching me over time i don't get into the spirit cocoa and using some kind of terms on this platform because i try to be at the level where we can all reason together there is a force let me just say an energy coming into the whole structure of family and like i always say if you have been watching me over time the structure of how to really really get hold or what i say destabilize the christian community or, or even the world is starting from the foundation family community local government or what i say you know state you know then we look at the um, 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 countries and then globally so right now the foundation of family is i think to a great extent coming under severe attack i'm not trying to endorse any form of domestic violence but right now we might see people speaking of the more which i think is good but the next thing is that we are going to ask ourselves a question is that is it everything that you know families themselves should bring on social media i think there are levels to you know deal with these things even within the family before it even becomes a social media sensation because whether you like it or not there'll be people like me that will make comments about these particular situations and then you know get to even add volume to things either in a positive light or even in a worse negative light not everybody will look at the same situation the same way so what i'm trying to say right now is that families themselves would have to need, need to have structures because at this point you could see that osinachi's family was totally neglected and put away from what was happening interior osinachi's father was not there and if you listen to what the sister was saying that osinachi had the character of her father humble don't like issues in fact if she's having a problem with you i beg you carry your in fact it's better that you even take the issue or you know you know take care of the situation than her getting involved you see that kind of thing so she was just very meek at heart but when it comes to situations like this we can learn from this to the point that looking at the signs that he was putting the family away even his own family where peter Mwachiku came from he was not really really in contact with them the way they didn't even know things that were going on with him. They only used to hear, oh, Peter Nwachuku this. The funny thing was that, according to the family, that Peter Nwachuku himself was, quote and unquote, acting like a pastor. Some articles have said he was a pastor. Some have said he was a deacon. Now, look at the level of religious myopia that is even coming into this. Because the brother was even saying that the last time he visited the home, he was praying olive oil, or anointing oil or whatever everywhere. And such a thing is just going to show you the level of hypocrisy we have in the body of Christ. You have seen stories of pastors themselves, men of God that do worse than even these themselves. But they are still on pulpit preaching. I guess so. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So the point I'm trying to make us understand right now is that there are a lot of ways to look at this. A lot of people are to blame and all that. But we can learn from this particular situation and move further from it. Because when things like this happen and become a national attention to the point that the Senate is even involved. To the point that the Minister for Women Affairs is even involved. To the point that for in the whole Senate they had to stand up and give a moment of silence for her. 
that is something that is really, really interesting for me. And I would say that the Nigerian community is beginning to wake up to some kind of conversations and all that around family because family itself is foundational to even looking at the country or the community as a whole when the family is served with dysfunctional raising dysfunctional children those children are the ones that will grow up to become a menace in the society because everybody has just messed up but for a fact you watching me right right now if you have never fucked up hands up in the air of course we have fucked up so many times in our lives in different scenes or would i say in different situations but what really does matter is that even though you have made mistakes because some of you watching me right now may be family men family women that have maybe gone through abuse or maybe you are the ones that are abusing how can you learn from this and move on and stop doing this so maybe i think the emphasis should be on stopping abuse than you know families breaking up because because i've seen people now start posting that so, so, so years ago, my husband beat me. So, so, so years ago, my wife beat me. That kind of thing. I come from a family where I've witnessed my parents fight. Not like, okay, two of them fight. You get that kind of thing. But it was just for a while and later it stopped because family got involved. You know, conversations started happening. People started coming and then talking to both parties. And over time, you know, things begin to dwindle down. But you can see that the extended family were totally put away from what was happening in and then the whole thing escalated because the man feels like he's the lord of the home i don't know if you're getting the point of what i'm saying so right now i don't want the future or the younger ones in my generation to go into marriage having some kind of mindset about certain things that because of course marriages if, if you're watching me right now and you're married you know that marriages also come with you know problems here and there today i know i know i know i've talked around it but i saw it this one now is in black and white nobody will say it's me that said it i just picked it out from the word that place show us that verse 23 33 verse 33 where we read it says nevertheless that's the conclusion of the whole matter let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself then he says and the wife see that she reverence her husband please can you give it to me in the amplified bible translation it says nevertheless let every man of you without exception love his wife as being in a sense his own self and let the wife see that she respects and reverences her husband please write respect down the right reverence. Another day we will talk about them. And that she notices him. Write it down. If you are a woman, say, notice your husband. Regards him. You've written that. Then the next one, honors him. Then, prefers him. You're not sitting down comparing him. You're not like Mr. X, Y, Z. You don't do like Mr. Jack. You are not doing like Mr. John. Prefers him. Anyway, we said we're going to talk about it next time. She venerates him. She esteems him. Am I too fast? She esteems him and that she defers to him. She defers to him. She praises him. She loves and admires him exceedingly. Yeah. Ah. Only me. I'm sure that's what one woman is thinking. But it's just, it was from Bible, or did I read it from my head? Okay, let me show you one more thing and then we'll move on to the singles. The word reverence in the King James, that word reverence in the King James, is taken from the original Greek word of Furby. And that word means to revere. But I like.
I squeezed my face when I read further. It says, to fear. To fear, to be afraid of. As someone that is startled by strange sight or sound. And then to be struck with amazement. Then, of course, some of the words we read in the amplified, by, um, amplified version, to venerate him and so on and so forth. And I'm like, we can't say that we are to go around fearing our husbands. But I believe that the original Hebrew, uh, Greek word that is used there is to connote the fact that your husband is not your pally. In as much as you are friends, do you know what? Daddy and my husband and I are our best friends. One day somebody came to his office and said, eh, you see, pastor, you need to have other friends. Your wife is not the only one that should be your friend. He was advertising himself as a friend. We are friends. He can crack jokes and I understand what he's saying. And he cracks a lot of jokes when he's in a jokey mood. <laughs> you know, otherwise he's in the spirit, in prayer and all that. But when he comes back from praying, he can be just so absolutely sweet. Alright? But in as much as all that is on, I don't talk to him anyhow. I don't, I don't call him by his name. I don't, I don't talk down at him. It doesn't matter what I want to communicate. I have the mental understanding that he's my superior officer. I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying. I realize that many of us women handle our husbands with some level of levity. I'm sorry, oh, don't call me old-fashioned. But this issue of calling your husband baby, me, I don't understand. I'm sorry, oh, maybe I'm from the Stone Age. Yeah, if he calls you baby, oh, that's good. He can call you baby. But when you keep on calling him baby, you start to see him like a baby in your eyes. Oh yeah, once in a while. Okay, if you saw you are so much in love with the word baby, fine. You can call him baby. After all, he's your baby. You are to baby your husband and take care of him and love him and, you know, put his head on your, on your laps and baby him, you know, like a baby. Oh yes, good, that's fine. But when that becomes his established title, I don't understand. saying that you should be quivering and shaking when you see your husband coming like the lion of the tribe of his house arriving in the night and then all the children dive under the bed and dive under the table and they, they suddenly fell asleep, they were awake see so as soon as they heard the sound of the car outside they said, ah, oh boss, daddy don't call find your level everybody dives to their room and dives under the blanket and they are fast asleep and they either wake up before he gets out of the house and they are out or they stay in and let him go first no, that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about a respectful disposition a, 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 a reverential disposition of honor, of deferring to him. You can't be in public and people are talking to him somehow and you join the people. Never. You stand with him and say, whatever you people think, I believe what he said. You should be his greatest cheerleader. Your assignment in his life, which we didn't talk about. That was the first passage we read when God said, it's not good that man should be alone. Let us make him and help meet for him. And then God caused 
Eve to, be, to comfort out of his rib. Your assignment is to help him. Another day we'll talk about help. Sisters, madams, married women, let me come back to you. There are some of us that married looking a certain way and along the line we have transformed to something else. You want to look the way everybody else is looking and then suddenly your husband wakes up one day and says, where is my wife? Where is the girl I married? Both from size that has changed to complexion that has changed. To everything. And you look many times different from who he married. There's a problem there. Let's get back to basics and find out what is the fundamental person, the original look, the original personality that your husband married. <laughs>